This video is sponsored by me. Like and subscribe. Man, I really didn't want to make this video. Released for the PC Engine exclusively in Japan on October 29th, 1993. Castlevania Rondo of Blood is what's nowadays often considered the pinnacle of classic Castlevania. And you know what, I'm just gonna get it out of the way right now. I fucking hate this game. Over and over, time and time again, everyone praises this game, talking about how incredible it is. The level design is so good, the graphics are great, the soundtrack is wonderfully varied. What the actual fuck? Look. I have made it clear time and time again that I am willing to respect people having a perspective different than mine. But when talking about Rondo of Blood, this is one of the few times where I absolutely refuse to accept these opinions. And that is because they are just straight up factually incorrect. Every time Rondo of Blood gets discussed, it almost feels like I'm missing some kind of joke. Like it's one of those games that is so bad, everyone just likes talking about how good it is as a gag. Kinda like the Zelda CDI games. But honestly, even those games have far more value than Rondo. Hopefully in the course of making this video, I'll finally get in on this sick, sick joke. Because I refuse to believe there is any true value in this sheer embarrassment of a product. <sighs> this is Castlevania Rondo of Blood. Okay, so right off the bat, I already have some issues. This logo is awful. Castlevania always prided itself on being far darker than most contemporary side scrollers from the time, but this logo is just way too colorful. As I said earlier, the game initially only came out in Japan, so for this video I'm going to be playing it on Castlevania The Dracula X Chronicles on PSP, a collection which also includes the far superior Symphony of the Night. Castlevania games have pretty wacky naming conventions over in Japan, so while the logo may read Akumaju Dracula PKX, that's just the game's Japanese name, with Rondo of Blood being the localized title. At the very least, logo notwithstanding, this title screen is pretty solid, even if the clouds are slightly out of control. No, this is not sped up footage, this is how fast they actually go. Pressing start immediately puts us into gameplay, and this is where one of my many, many issues with Rondo of Blood starts coming into play. There is absolutely no story whatsoever. I know the series was kinda going in circles at the time, what with how many of the games were just retellings of the original Castlevania, but removing plot out of the equation entirely was absolutely the wrong move on Konami's part. You play as this nameless blue dude, who, alongside this pink girl who only shows up at the end, are the only two characters in the entire thing. They don't even have Dracula. How the fuck are you supposed to have a Castlevania game? without fucking Dracula. His name is right there on the Japanese title. How did this even happen? Another thing that sucks about this piece of shit are the graphics. More specifically, the art style. I've previously gone on record saying that I dislike the cutesy anime aesthetic of the Kid Dracula games, and prefer it when Castlevania goes for a more gothic approach, which is what it usually does. But you know, at least the Kid Dracula games were just stupid harmless spin-offs. But this is supposed to be the next-gen Castlevania experience, yet it looks marginally worse than the previous two games. How in the hell did they mess it up so bad? Outside of the title screen, Rondo of Blood is just way too colorful. Everything looks like a shitty old polygonal PC game. And this game is in 2D. It is a 2D game with the art style of an early 3D game. The most ugly art style known to man. These are the great graphics everyone keeps talking about? And the 
character designs are just as bad. Everyone is comprised of a bunch of spheres and triangles. People actually like this. The lips of the main character seriously freaks me out. And none of them are even standing on the ground. They're just levitating on top of it. Did anybody actually playtest this shit? And if you thought the gameplay would make up for the terrible visuals, ho ho ho, then you'd be completely wrong. The controls here are even worse than fucking Castlevania the Adventure. Chronicles was a bit more limited than Castlevania 4, but at the very least it was still more refined than the NES games. Rondo of Blood is somehow even more restrictive than the NES games. You can no longer duck, which was a vital movement option present in literally every previous game. The whip is shorter and has more of a delay than ever, and the jumping is the absolute worst it has ever been. It is so slow, and and you jump like you're on the freaking moon. I mean really, that is one annoying flaw. So much for realism. The only good thing about the jump controls is that you can now jump backwards, which has literally no practical use. But with how bad this game is, even the smallest of things seem like fucking godsend by this point. So with all of that said, why in the hell is Rondo of Plot so well beloved despite being clearly so awful? Well, I think I cracked the formula. You see, this is by far the easiest, most overly simplified Castlevania game ever made. I'm guessing Konami were under a lot of heat because of how Chronicles was considered way too hard. So for this next game, they took a complete 180 and made a game where it is literally impossible to lose. There are no candles, no breakable walls, and enemies don't drop any items. And that's because there are no items. I guess the concept of getting stronger and holding up while attacking was just way too complicated for general consumers. So the developer simplified it beyond belief here. There's only one type of enemy in the entire game. These ugly purple guys. And all they ever do is just walk to the left. And as you'd expect, they die in one hit. They are so pathetically weak that they even die by running towards the wall. Wow. But the absolute most insulting thing about the difficulty here is that you literally can't die. Not because the game is forgiving or some crap like that, but because in Rondo of Blood you have infinite health, making any and all possible challenges completely trivial. Guys, look, I get that Castlevania games are pretty hard, and and it might be discouraging not being able to beat them, but taking this absolute insult of a game and hailing it as the best in the series only because you are actually able to beat it is the absolute lowest you can go. If this is your favorite Castlevania game, then you, my friend, should be ashamed to call yourself a gamer. But you know, even with everything I just said, there is one thing I do actually like about Rondo of Blood, and you probably saw it coming, the music. It's pretty hard to screw up a Castlevania soundtrack, and oh man, does this one deliver. The game only has one song, Opus 13. I do think it gets pretty repetitive if you listen to it for a while, but even so, this is a great music piece, one which Rondo of Blood really did not deserve. The only thing that does kinda suck about it is that it doesn't look naturally. The track kinda just fades out and then fades back in. It's a minor thing, but still worth pointing out. However, all of Rondo of Plots' issues culminate in what might just be the most embarrassing thing about it. Its length. The game only has one level. Stage X. Destiny cannot be stopped here. It's literally just a straight line with a few enemies, again with the supposed incredible level design. You eventually do make it to this pink girl I mentioned earlier. And this is where Rondo of Blood just anticlimactically ends. No, there are absolutely no bosses. Just a screen in the back telling you to fuck off and do something worthwhile with your time, while the girl is apologizing. I'd like to think that this girl 
is supposed to represent all of the people who made this game. They know it's complete garbage, but they had to make it. I'm pretty sure Konami forced them to make it like this, in order to appease gaming journalists who found Chronicles to be too difficult. But that still doesn't excuse Rondo of Blood being as pathetically short as it is. Guess they couldn't think up other ways to make the game longer without having it be too difficult. But you know, at least it was short. With how terrible Rondo of Blood was, the thought of it being a full-length Castlevania game terrifies me. I'm glad I can just press start, exit the game, and never have to play Castlevania Rondo of Blood ever again. Well, I sure am glad that's done and over with, wait. Oh, yeah! Akumaju Dracula PK is just a minigame that's played INSTEAD of Rondo of Blood if you don't have the correct PC Engine system card. Well, I've just made a complete ass out of myself.